Good afternoon. Sorry for the late start here. We had uh, to work through a couple things, but uh, thank you all as always for joining us for our Top Dog Cybersecurity webinar series. Uh, today we are diving into a common misconception that uh, once you've taken that step to move your business to the cloud, you are now safe and secure. Uh, for instance, a lot of what we will focus on today is Microsoft Office 365. Uh, and many people have thought and, and still think that th there's nothing to worry about now that you have shifted to Office 365. And, <clears throat> you know, kind of this, hey, it's Microsoft. They, they got me on this, right? They always look out for my best interests, right? Um, well, let's look at that today. Um, and uh, if you've missed our past webinars, you can always go check them out on demand at our Top Dog PC YouTube channel. We'll also send out this webinar on demand as well. Um, and as always, I will do my best to sort through your questions and get them answered. So don't hold back any questions you have. Uh, we, we have another guest panelist uh, with us this month. His name is Sam Ellen. Uh, he is the solution specialist with Spanning who will uh, show a quick tour uh, of an available backup cloud backup solution for Office 365 uh, toward the end. And, um, and real quick again, for those who are new to us, uh, my name is Jordan Darling and I'm your color commentator and facilitator. Uh, I'm a certified information system security professional, uh, vice president of Top Dog PC and CEO of High Tech Secure. And uh, I'm here with Joe Malmberg, who is our main presenter today. Joe is the owner and president of Top Dog PC the CTO of High Tech Secure and the holder of a SANS a GIAC Security Essentials certification and uh, much more experience and um, credentials for him. Uh, so he is worth the listen. Uh, Joe and I both have 16 years of experience as small business owners in information technology and information security. So I hope that our experience uh, can bring you some valuable thoughts and insights today. Uh, so, Joe, take it away. All right, thanks, Jordan. Uh, it looks like uh, Sam is is uh, is in here too, so we can pop him into the presenters. I want to thank Sam for for joining uh, us today too. Uh, he he really understands. Um, he's been kind of living and breathing this whole uh, uh, Office 365 backup thing for a while now, and uh, I appreciate it doubly because I understand that he recently became uh, a father of a little girl, and uh, so he's actually taking a little bit of time out of his busy uh, schedule to, to join us today. So thanks, Sam, and uh, you'll be hearing from him here. Congratulations, Sam. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll kind of hop in here. Uh, the, first, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, we're just going to kind of go over what, what, the, what we're going to try to cover here on this, uh, on this, uh, this webinar. Um, you know, first of all, just, you know, we're going to talk about SaaS, which is software as a service, um, and uh, the potential for data loss there. I also want to just cover some reasons that uh, it's worth looking at potentially using a, a third-party tool to back uh, up cloud data. And we're also just going to cover the methods that you have kind of out of the box with most versions of Office 365 to do some kinds of backup. Um, we're going to look at why a third party solution could be worthwhile and then just kind of cover some check marks. If you are going to go down the road of doing that, uh, uh, things to look for in a cloud backup solution. And then and then we're going to give Sam an opportunity to show uh, spanning, which is a solution that, that we've kind of locked into um, a top dog PC um, for a uh, Office 365 backup tool. So uh, kind of jumping in. Um, let me bring it up here. Uh, just kind of some of the things that we do at Top Dog, you know, and it, when we set up an Office 365 tenant, uh, a client, when you're doing it for the first time, you know, there's a list of things that you do. So you, you want to do a lot of the, um, the things just to make it a secure environment. Uh, Microsoft does a lot of things out of the box that make it secure, but um, there are many things that they leave up to us as kind of the administrators of our of our little realm in the 365. So uh, going down the list, enforcing multi-factor authentication. You know, that's something you uh, know your password and something you have in this case, which is going to be a, a token on your smartphone that's going to let you get in to view your email through the web page or through through the internet when you're when you are uh, out and about. Um, it makes it so that bad guys can't get in with just your password, which 
happens a lot. Um, enforcing modern authentication, that's just another tool in the Microsoft tool set that uh, um, newer versions of their applications use to authenticate to, um, to uh, the uh, Office 365 environment. Uh, just basic standard things like not letting regular users run as global administrators in Office 365. You don't let people do it on their desktop. We don't let them do it in Office 365. Um, really popular uh, tac uh, uh, tactic of the um, of the bad guys is if they do um, penetrate an account and get in, um, is that they start forwarding all the emails out. So uh, just you, really, there shouldn't be a, a good reason. By default, you shouldn't allow emails to forward outside of your organization. So we just turn that off. And if there's an exception, then we make an exception for that person or that that situation. But by default, you don't have it on. And then uh, external sharing. Do we really need to share, allow people to share their email or their calendar outside of the organization? By default, probably not. Let's turn it off and then we can turn it back on if we want, don't want to. And by, I also said unused apps. Don't uh, turn up. There's so many apps that you get with Office 365. If you're not using them, uh, probably just want to turn those off. Um, so the one thing I left out of that is backups, right? So we're doing all these things to secure the environment. I, I argue that backup is part of your security strategy. Um, what are we doing to back things up? Well, um, let's just look at some statistics here. So uh, and over the over a 12 month period, 77% uh, of companies are reporting that uh, that some sort of loss of data in a software as a service application. Um, and the reason is that most vendors, software service vendors, they don't, they can't protect you from user initiated data deletions. If a user deletes something, they don't have the mechanisms in place to easily uh, reverse that. Um, and and that, that all kind of goes back to the whole part of, which we'll cover here a little bit more uh, in the future here, of uh, the, uh, role of, of security kind of falling on us. Um, their SLA doesn't provide for restoring lost data. Um, and so, and, and then the other part of this is that they don't really offer an easy on-demand restore process. And I'm going to cover that here shortly too. We're going to, we're going to look at what it, what those steps are if you're working with Microsoft's uh, built-in tools to, um, to restore data. Um, so let's talk about the reasons for backing it up, right? The number one thing, the th reason that we get calls for restoring data anywhere is an accidental deletion, right? This happens all the time. Somebody accidentally overwrote something or they deleted something that they didn't mean to. Um, next thing, you know, we've all heard about ransomware. We've talked about it in all of our, um, all of our uh, cybersecurity webinars this year. Uh, it's a huge threat. Um, you know, malware, ransomware, those things that come in through attachments, they can affect and they do affect cloud data. Um, next thing is uh, malicious insiders, right? So, uh, you know, this report showing 60% of all data attacks were carried about by insiders. Um, you know, malicious insiders, that can be that great employee that you have that's like, you know, who's planning on leaving in a month and they start clearing out their inbox and, um, you know, you don't have, uh, and they, they leave and you check out their mailbox because you needed something important and the whole thing's empty. Uh, and then programmatic errors. So, you know, this is a really uh, popular one, uh, or really one that we don't really think about, but, you know, employees install applications that integrate with Office 365 on their phones all the time. You know, what if somebody installs some sort of productivity app on their mobile device, they can easily wipe out the list of contacts and calendars on there. So, um, those are some very common things. Programmatic errors, again, not a malicious thing. There's only really, there are 50% of the things here are, are, are malicious. Um, but, you know, we might not even call those malicious insiders necessarily malicious. They're people that are just like, hey, I don't need to see what I've been doing. Yeah. And Joel, I, just a comment on malicious insiders. I, yeah. I just feel like in my career, over and over again, you kind of hear the same story. You, you, you hear, you know, we want to, you know, so-and-so is going to be leaving. They, I don't expect them to do anything malicious. Um, but, you know, it, most, a lot of business owners still have that concern um, that, you know, something could happen. Um, <clears throat> but you've seen it over and over again that it, we, we like to think, give people the benefit of the doubt and think that they won't, wouldn't do anything. But the, the fact is that oftentimes they do, or they don't even know, you know, they, they do something and they don't really know that it's not what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. and it causes some problems. So, yep. yeah. 
Yeah, that the 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 uh, move of deleting your stuff before you leave a a role is just it's it seems like it's just standard practice, right? Uh, so yeah, what is Microsoft's guarantee? Microsoft with and this is true for many software as a service providers, they guarantee availability. They're guaranteeing that your data is going to be available to access through their system. So they have geo redundancy they have servers all over the country all over the world and they're guaranteeing that uh, if you log into your email account at office 365 you're going to be able to see the email that's there um, and at the the backup that you have there like the good feeling that warm fuzzy that we get is that you know unlike when you are building a, a infrastructure on premises uh, you're Le much, much less likely to lose your data due to infrastructure failure. You know, if you're on-prem, you know, small business, you might have a server and maybe you have a backup server, hopefully. Um, you know, that's that's your backup. They've got a lot more going on there. They've got a, multiple sites uh, and it's very highly fault tolerant. Uh, there's a little link there I included. I turned it into a bit.ly link. It's a safe one to visit. It just takes you to Microsoft site talking about their, uh, their uptime and availability. So yeah, Microsoft does back up some backup data. There, that's that's a that's a something that you know people say. Oh, Microsoft doesn't back anything up. Yeah, they do back stuff up, but it's it's very specific how what's backed up and how it's backed up and how it's restored. We're gonna go over some of those things. So hey, Joe, uh, so, qu a quick question yes. here mm -hmm. um, that came in. Uh, in terms of, it says data will likely not be lost due to infrastructure structure failure. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, if if there is an infrastructure failure that does cause me to lose data, is mm -hmm. does Microsoft then have a way to recover that? That or, I mean, yeah, they that this link that I have goes into where and how things are stored. Um, it would take a pretty massive, um, I think, natural disaster or or disaster of some kind for. Um, your data to be lost due to infrastructure failure. Um, they have so many um, kind of different uh, different ways that they're they're offering redundancy for both your live for your live data like around their um, uh, their global infrastructure. Uh, it would be on the list of things that I would worry about from a backup perspective. It's one of the things that reasons I don't have that as like the top one of the top four or five reasons. Uh, there are more five or six reasons to, to think about backup uh, that I would come up with um, and, and that one wouldn't be on the list. Yeah, it's kind of like what, what our level three engineer says sometimes when you, when you build infrastructure correctly, sometimes if, if, if that goes down and you're worried about data loss, uh, it's maybe not your, maybe not, not the first thing for concern. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe there's a lot of other things going on that you're probably more mm -hmm. concerned about. Yep. Yeah, their their primary focus is managing the infrastructure and maintaining uptime. So, really, the all the responsibility they're empowering us with with the responsibility for the data. So, Microsoft backs up that they that they fully back up the data is not true, but they do back up data. So, well, let's just look at some of these. If you soft delete a mailbox, that's just if you just delete a user. The mailbox it sits there and. Uh, by default, up to 30 days, it can be restored. And I think that is the maximum that it can be set to. Single items, if a user is like, hey, I'm leaving, I'm, I, I'm gonna delete my mailbox. Uh, by default, uh, the default setting is 14 days, uh, at which point you can't recover that email. Um, you can increase that to 30 days through a PowerShell command. Um, but still, it's not a huge amount of time. Uh, SharePoint OneDrive data is recoverable, recoverable for up to 93 days. I believe that's correct statistic. That's what I found. Um, one, but the the thing is that typically, I mean, unless it's like right after somebody left and you're looking for that email after someone left, the the types of uh, data loss that I'm talking about that is an accident, um, the average length of time for a data compromise <clears throat> to discovery is over 140 days. So <clears throat> blows past all of these the, the times that they have listed here. Um, it's important to bring up the archiving uh, litigation hold features of uh, Office 365. 
uh, you know, if you have um, a little bit higher end Office 365 plan, you can have, you'll have archiving and litigation hold as options on your email box. Archiving, um, Microsoft on like their E3 plan, they give you unlimited archiving. You can store as much email as you want on there. Um, it's used for storing old data. That's really what it's supposed to be used for. It's supposed to be used for storing old emails that you don't need in your primary email box. But it's not immutable. You can change those emails. You can mess with them. You can delete them. Um, and they're really not intended for backups. They're intended for, here's my old email if I need to re refer to it. Litigation hold. Litigation hold is intended. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a process. It's intended to be used when uh, you uh, are undergoing some sort of a litigation, some sort of litigation, or maybe you're in a protected uh, um, uh, 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 vertical that you know requires that you do it. Um, but again, requires a little bit more expensive plan. Um, and some just, there are some caveats with it too. Like if you turn that on, um, it's kind of neat that Microsoft lets you do this. If you turn on litigation hold, you delete the mailbox, or sorry, you delete the user, the mailbox actually sticks around in Office 365 and the license goes away and everything. But if you ever need to look at that mailbox again, um, you have to restore it and turn it back on again. And then it's immutable. You can, it's not immutable. It removes the litigation hold and people can mess with it. So the, the litigation hold is lost. So it doesn't, it, it's, it's made for that very specific purpose. Uh, it could be used as kind of a, you know, a DIY backup, but it's not a really user-friendly way of, of doing it. The, and then the most important part of this, and this is really for me, uh, you know, as I've looked at this as skeptically, like, why do I need Office 365? Point in time restoration. There is no point in time restoration for any way that I've seen through Microsoft, at least as, a, as, a, as an administrator of Office 365, that I can do a point in time restoration of anything. Um, so what's our responsibility? Uh, this, is, this is what Microsoft sends our way. This is, these are the, the roles that we play. Uh, we are responsible for our data. We're responsible for access and control of the data. Um, and this is really the, that, that, that's the primary role that we have. And then we are responsible for backups. If we care about having data beyond what those built-in mechanisms are, we're responsible for that. Um, we are the data owner. And so we are responsible for all the compliance that our industry might require. Um, and we're also responsible for making sure that our internal users have um, appropriate uh, access to the data that we uh, generate. So let's kind of go through just a quick, this is a quick, uh, a very short way, uh, uh, list of steps that we'd have to run through in order to restore a single email uh, that has been deleted from uh, uh, Office 365. And of course, this is where, you know, this is by default. So uh, somebody deletes a message, we haven't extended it out to 30 days, but let's just say for sake of argument, we, we did. The deleted message needs to be no more than if you're on standard 14 days old, if you've changed it 30 days old. Uh, you have to then go in and assign appropriate permissions to the user uh, so that they can recover the emails. And that's done with PowerShell. You have to go into the mailbox and enable, enable single item recovery. You do that in PowerShell. You have to search for the messages. And this is really, really where I, I see, uh, again, I see some real power in the third party backup solutions. Uh, you have to know something about that email that you're looking for. You gotta look for all this in PowerShell. You gotta know the subject, the sender, or the date, or you gotta get a date range. And I'll tell you what, if we get an email from somebody saying, hey, there's something in here that I need to find, I'll ask them, I guess I would ask them, can you give me a date range? I'd have to get a dump of all those emails. I'd give them to an Excel document. And then I'd say, which of these do you want restored? And they'd look through them and they'd say, hmm, uh, I want this one and this one. Or you know what? I, can I look at this one and see if I need it restored? And I'd probably just say, I'm just going to restore all of them, I guess. And you're going to have to figure it out. Um, so that part is kind of uh, not super user friendly. Uh, and then you're actually restoring them to a discovery mailbox where you can look at them. And then once you've decided, yes, I want to keep those, then you move them from that discovery one back into the mailbox that you originally wanted to restore them to. So not a quick and easy process. It's, it's a lot of work. Um, and uh, it's obviously something that's going to have to require intervention of IT. So uh, let's talk about a little bit why a third party tool can be worthwhile. Obviously, I've touched on some of those things. Um, you're getting a separate secure copy of all your data. Um, it's happening automatically. 
uh, you know, at least with the solution that we've that we've uh, decided to move forward with here with spanning, um, there it's a daily backup you can do it on demand. Um, it's very set and forget. Uh, we have it has the ability so that an end user can restore a file. You can turn that on so that IT doesn't need to be involved. Um, and then this is huge. I think that this point in time restoration, you know, when you're looking at email, you know, I've shown it in other, in other presentations. I chose not to on here because I've shown it so many times, but everyone who's been on our other presentations has seen the uh, malicious Office 365 plugin that somebody clicks, okay, I authorize this and their entire inbox gets encrypted. Um, same thing can happen to your SharePoint data. Point in time recovery lets you roll back to a day before that happened or a time before that happened. Um, it's really challenging to do that with Microsoft's built-in tools. Um, and then, uh, you know, oh, the other thing, you know, this, I thought this was a very cool feature of this is just uh, you're, you're getting uh, the ability, you know, with, with a third-party backup, you have the ability to have that provide a second set of eyes or analysis on the uh, data that you're backing up. And so spanning actually looks for malicious software that uh, may have, you know, come in and maybe there's just some files that are attachments or something like that. It's gonna be looking for viruses on there. Um, you know, when you're looking, easy use is really important. That's one of the reasons we made our decision. Um, it needs to be easy to use. Uh, admins need to be able to set roles and rights for users just like they do in Office 365. Um, you know, with any cloud solutions you should have, um, especially when, you know, you're dealing with a, uh, an industry that maybe has uh, some regulatory um, requirements. Um, uh, look for a SOC 2 uh, compliant uh, data center facility. That's, that not only covers the, the physical security that they have, it covers all the operations and everything behind that. Um, support is key, uh, uptime is key, um, alerting is very important, and then, um, yeah, you don't want to have to keep paying for storage. You know, people don't like to delete. Even when people delete emails, we're backing them up. So if it's if it's what well, we want to back everything up, give us unlimited storage. So at this point, I wanted to I wanted to pass the baton over to Sam, and uh, uh, he's gonna maybe let him do a little screen share and and uh, show a little bit uh, of uh, the spanning solution. Sam, is that does that work for you? All right, looks yes. like Sam is, Sam's in. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for the rundown. That that really does cover, uh, you know, our our solution in a nutshell, the industry in a nutshell. Um, I can just piggyback on on some of what you're talking about in terms of these SaaS providers. Really, just to sum it up, they don't want anything to do with backup and recovery, um, especially Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft just wants to write applications so that you can run your business. And, and of course they do have storage, but when it comes to, to backing up and restoring, they really don't want to have anything to do with that. And, and you can imagine that's for a number of reasons, uh, liability being one of them, but also they just want to focus on building great business applications. So what's really cool about what spanning does is I, I if everyone can see my screen, Spanning exists as an application within Microsoft uh, Live. So like within the Microsoft environment, you can jump into spanning. So you heard earlier that we do provide for end user self service. This is key. This really keeps everyone in IT and support, uh, for lack of a better term, clean in the pocket, so to speak because you don't have to really worry about labor intensive tasks such as go find an email from two years ago. You know, can you please help me find a file that I, I lost from eight months ago, please. You know, these are the types of, of support uh, tickets that are just labor intensive. They are a nightmare for everyone and they're easy if you have the right user interface and user experience, which Spanning believes, we, I believe that we do. So if you wanted to, you could just jump into spanning just as easy as you would jump into Outlook or OneDrive or Excel or Word. So let's just jump into the, the application proper. And I can walk you through a couple of use case scenarios. So we're looking at the admin dashboard. Now there are two main user experiences here. There's, there's two different uh, users. There is the end user, as I alluded to earlier, 
and they have limited permissions. And then of course you do have an admin user, which for lack of a better term, they have God access, right? They can do whatever they want within the application. So what we're doing is we are backing up mail, we are backing up calendars, we are backing up contacts, we are backing up uh, OneDrive, and we are also backing up SharePoint. So you see SharePoint right here. So that means Teams and group sites. So anyone that is jumping on the Microsoft Team bandwagon, which a lot of people are, uh, spanning is going to, to be there for you to make sure that those team sites are backed up. When you're diagnosing a, a specific user, and I love using Carol Beard uh, just to show everyone what's, what's going on here. So what we're looking at really as an admin, and I'm going to jump back and forth, by the way, from admin to end user. I'm going to kind of kill two birds with one stone, talk about you know, the two different users of the application. If I'm an admin and I'm looking at Carol Beard over here, you're going to see what occurred since the last automated backup. Okay, so on that note, we do one automated backup per day. So what this is showing us is what changed since yesterday's backup. Now, this is important if you're an administrator, if you are a C-level executive, because let's say Carol Beard, we were talking about malicious activity, right? We, we talked about that earlier. Let's say Carol Beard uh, didn't get the promotion that she wanted. Let's say that um, she's the CFO of the company. She was expecting to become CEO. She didn't get it. She's extremely upset. And uh, now she just, you know, once she has it in for, for this company. All right. Now it's, it's an extreme example, but it's still a use case scenario. <laughs> so if we're, if we're looking at OneDrive as an administrator and we see, let's say 100 changes in Carol Beard's OneDrive, well, that might be a red flag for everybody. Okay, but for an administrator or an executive, they'd be like, whoa, what is going on with Carol Beard? How come she just changed 100 documents in one day? All right, that, that is a problem. It could be a problem. Let's go talk to her. Now, it could be a malicious act or maybe Carol just got hacked. Maybe, maybe her credentials were also compromised and someone's in there just messing around on her uh, profile and, and messing things up for everybody. Now, this is just one of the perks that you get with spanning. I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to get caught up on this feature alone because it, the really meat and potatoes of spanning is backup and recovery. So let's jump into to that use case scenario. Now, I talked about earlier just having an end user that lost an email and, and just, they can't find it. They knew that they got it back in 2018. And let's jump back into 2018 and for, they know it was in October. So once again, we're gonna stay with Carol Beard as our little test user. Carol Beard knows that she got an email somewhere in the middle of October, so she can choose that date. And she knows that the email came from Jonathan. So Carol Beard as an end user can conduct this entire uh, you know, search. So now that we have the results populating, Carol Beard says, oh, well, okay, cool. I think it's one of these emails, all right? So she's gonna select these five emails and she is going to be able to go in and restore them herself. Now, this is where the user experiences diverge a little bit. I wanna be very clear. End users only have the ability to restore data to themselves, okay? So if this is Carol Beard, she is only able to restore this to herself. If you're an admin, however, this is what makes spanning very, very unique. You have the ability to do what we call a cross user restore. So let's say Carol Beard couldn't perform this function. Maybe she couldn't do the search. She's just not tech savvy enough. So she, she does contact support. Support can go ahead and send them back to Carol Beard, right? Or Carol Beard can say, hey, go find those emails and send them to my assistant, Dan. No problem. We'll send them to Dan. But for the purposes of this demonstration, let me just show you how easy it is to do this and how quick 
uh, the, the restoration process takes. I'm going to restore this to a cross user restore to my test environment for the admin of Pinkston Farms. So I'm going to jump into the live environment. And within just a couple of seconds, we can check the time and date stamp down here. It is obviously military time, but you'll see within five seconds, those emails have been restored uh, very easily. So once again, if this was Carol Beard performing this search and doing this self-service, she just got the, the document that she was looking for. She didn't have to bug anyone in support, and it's a very simple process. If, however, support had to get involved, they can send this to whomever they want within the organization. So it's, it's a very simple point and click solution in that regard. Now, a lot of companies also have turnover. You know, turnover is a, uh, you know, something that everyone has to deal with. When you use spanning, it's also a very simple process because you can literally just back up an entire mailbox. So here we go again with Carol Beard, the CFO. She's resigning in this, in this scenario. Uh, and we want to make sure that we reserve and, and save all of the CFO's emails. We can ignore junk if we want, right? And so therefore, we can just jump into what I did earlier, which was a cross user restore. And let's say that Carol Beard uh, does have a replacement right now. Let's say the, C the new CFO is, is on the ready. That person has her office set up it's, and she's good to go. We can just send all of this data to the new hire, to the new CFO. If, however, we don't have that CFO, and we do want to uh, just put this email, all of this data into a general, uh, you know, holding pattern, so to speak. We can do that as well, just create a shared profile. And we can go ahead and restore all of these emails to a shared profile and, and essentially just make an archivable, easily searchable and organized, uh, you know, ex-employee mailbox. So you see, I've done this say, earlier. Say Say, Sam, real quick uh, on this topic, I, I've got a question from uh, uh, from the attendees here. Uh, we have, uh, it says, so we, we assign all terminated employees mailboxes to an active Office 365 license under a fake username. So they put all their terminated employees mailboxes under one uh, fake username, licensed fake username. Will spanning be able to look for all of the emails within those mailboxes? Wait, so so all of the employees are under one profile? Uh, terminated employees. I, I would imagine, it, I, yeah. I think maybe I can jump in because I think there's sure. another part to this question. Uh, I would think that you're probably gonna want to be <clears throat> looking at historical ones. Um, that is messages that were received by that mailbox prior to their termination. Um, Correct. That, that, and, and this is, this is the protocol that I'm actually going through. And, and Jordan, is that, is that really what the, the heart of the question was? So anyone that leaves, we're, we're storing ex employees in one ex employee shared profile. And you can call yeah. it ex employees yes. at that domain.com. That's, that's essentially yeah. how I would, I would, yes. I would do it. Yeah. And once, and then once you do that, now, as if you can see my screen, I've created an offboarded Carol Beard CFO today, and all of the file structure is retained, as you can see. Um, this all happens very, very quickly. Uh, if we wanted to you know, let's, let's jump into someone, another one. Let's, let's say that there was a, just a salesperson, a junior salesperson uh, resigned back in January. So you can call that person John Smith, uh, sales, one fifteen twenty. So all of those people get parsed and, and, and archived in this shared ex-employee profile. 
So I, I hope that answers everyone's question. So once once we do that, it it, yeah, okay, cool, it cool. Yeah, it's it's a very simple process. I'm sure that everyone, you know, a lot of people are already doing that. But what spanning does is it makes it so super simple to to just do that in within you know seconds or minutes, depending on the amount of data in someone's email. And, and I think I think it's important to underscore too that <clears throat> all of this data that is being backed up, <clears throat> it. it it really doesn't matter where it ultimately ends up for viewing, whether it's, you know, in that particular use case, if it's in a shared mailbox or whatever, because it's, it's, it's always available in the backup uh, it's in spanning. So you can dump it wherever you want and it won't have changed because it's, it's a backup. It's a point in time. It's showing you a picture of that day or that time that it was backed up. So exactly. when you want to look at those, it really doesn't matter ultimately where, where it gets dropped into. Good point. <clears throat> Right, and, and on that point, you can do the same thing with calendar. So once again, if we, obviously Carol Beard had a lot of very important meetings. We want to retain that calendar. We can send it to that shared profile and just put it, call it Carol Beard's calendar. Same thing with contact, same thing with OneDrive, by the way. So OneDrive is, is very simple as well. We can cl just click, one, point and click, you're going to save an entire uh, OneDrive uh, instance and you're going to restore it just like I did earlier to, uh, you know, that, that shared profile that I was talking about. And then you're going to go into OneDrive and you're going to call it Carol Beard's OneDrive. So everything is being saved. Uh, the next person that resigns or is fired, you can do the same exact thing. And once all of that data is migrated, what you do is you jump into the admin center and here's Carol Beard. Just turn her off. You don't need to have that, uh, you know, that, that license anymore. So when we are talking about SharePoint, SharePoint is, is also just as simple. I, I always say that spanning is very simple from start to finish. As I said earlier, we do backup team and group sites. So if we wanted to jump into a team site, First of all, you'll see that the document libraries are very well organized. Uh, you can jump into any of these document libraries, but it's, it gets very granular. First of all, we do have that point in time where we can jump back to. So if someone accidentally deleted an Excel file on a, you know, on a, sales, on a, on a team sales uh, discussion board, you can jump back there and you can jump into the subsites and get down to the file level. You can literally go find a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet that was accidentally deleted. Now we have to go restore it. And by the way, this is one of those situations where the user experiences diverge. Um, this is an admin only permission when you're talking about SharePoint. End users do not have this permission. There's just too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. So only admins are going to have this permission. But if we wanted to restore that, you know, just that, that one document, we can hit next, we'll hit restore. And you're, you're always going to know if something is ongoing with this numeric badge icon up here. So now we have this task at hand. It's, it's currently going on. Um, just for the purposes of time, once again, let me show you one that I did earlier today. Uh, this is a SharePoint restore. Whenever you want to find the restored file, it's once again, point and click, go to the activity, click the link. We're going to open up in a live environment. This is a non-destructive restore so that it is once again, you'll see it's time and date stamped. In technology, it, it's a big problem. We, we don't want to solve one problem and create 10 and a simple, non-destructive folder like this is going to prevent that scenario. You know, we, we are doing it in a non-destructive fashion. But here are the documents that we need. And now that we're working in Microsoft, you can move these documents wherever you want. So let's move on to just activity and, and also just having visibility within your organization. Now, 
I, I spoke a little bit earlier about the perks of, of our product. And, you know, we do have a core system functionality, but there's also some byproducts of that core system functionality. And that is having visibility into the activities of your employees. So what are your employees exactly doing in spanning? You can see, you can see what they're doing. And you can pick up on patterns. You can see if someone is looking at a document that for maybe they shouldn't be looking at a document. Why is that person looking at this document? They, they have nothing to do with that. Uh, why did someone just do 20 restores in 10 minutes? All of this is going to be on the activity page. And so it gives you, once again, just, just a insight into the organization and, and also the employees therein and what they're doing. Just in case there's malicious acts, you, you, you just want to have that. So we did speak a little bit earlier about uh, any, any errors and, and also how spanning does prevent, uh, you know, we're not going to back up or restore malware or ransomware. We, we, we talked about that. I think Joe touched on that. So this is where you're going to see these, these types of, of scenarios pop up. So of course, from time to time, you're going to have an issue. Something's not going to back up. There might be an error. So when that does happen, you're always going to get an ex like a reason. So we're going to tell you, hey, this could not uh, back up because the mailbox wasn't assigned. The online mailbox was not assigned. And, you're, and you're, so therefore, you're like, okay, well, I, that's a Microsoft issue. I'm going to jump into Microsoft. I'll fix it. Uh, you can also see that right here it says there, right now we cannot back this up or we can't uh, find, find, find a reason. If the error persists, contact support. Now, on the, on the presentation, you did see that we have excellent support. And that is, that is actually a, a great representation of our support at Spanning. Um, Spanning actually has a 98% customer service rating online by our, our existing customer base. So that is a number we are extremely proud of. And I'm sure that anyone that's in business can, would, would appreciate that. If you ever get this alert that says contact support at Spanning, nine, you know, most people are like, oh, that's the kiss of death, but not with Spanning. With Spanning, you're gonna be able to take care of any of these issues very quickly. This is where you will see, and I can't replicate it right now, but this is where you will see, hey, we can't back this up. Microsoft is saying that this is uh, ransomware. So why are we going, Spanning is not going to back up or restore any type of corrupt data. And so this is where you will see that information on the problems page. So once more, you can get very selective. If someone could not back something up, if there was an error and Dan contacts support and says, hey, I couldn't back something up. No problem. You can jump right into Dan's instance and you can see exactly what happened and, and what, what the issues are. So once again, from a, an experience standpoint, from a UI standpoint, we try to keep everything, everything as simple as possible. And that's why we are the only SaaS backup provider that allows end user self-service. It's, it, it, it's because of the user experience. So um, before, before I wrap up, I do want to talk a little bit about the security. Uh, and, and it was represented very well. Uh, but I'd like to give everyone like a bird's eye view of our system architecture, just so you understand it. Uh, we are SOC 2 Type 2 certified. Uh, we are HIPAA compliant. We are also GDPR compliant, which is the European Union law. Okay. And we encrypt all of our data end to end in 256 bit AES encryption. So in essence, what spanning is as nice as our, our, our interface is, which is, I believe it's very, very good. We're pretty back end heavy. Like what we're doing is we're pulling all of that data from Microsoft. We're parsing it through our middleware. We're encrypting it and we're sending it to an Amazon data center. So that's a really fancy way of saying we have no clue what you're storing with us. 
all right? We have no visibility into the data that you're storing with us at all. On top of that, we are one of the few, or if not only, SaaS backup providers that does not store usernames or passwords. And this is key because right now, especially since COVID hit, especially since COVID hit, you have a bunch of hackers out there looking for third party applications, trying to get their credentials, looking for vulnerabilities within their infrastructure and then stealing credentials so that they can sell them on the dark web. That's not going to happen with spanning because we just don't save them. We do not save those, those credentials. We have uh, our, our business model is completely different and our technology is completely different so that we don't need to save those credentials. So finally, uh, just very simply, any global admin is going to be grandfathered in to be a spanning admin. So if you're a global admin on 365, you're going to be a spanning admin. But if you wanted to make a local admin at your office, you can also just make someone a spanning admin. So if I wanted to make Rupert uh, a spanning admin, now Rupert has the, the SharePoint permissions and, and the, the cross user restore permissions. He has certain export permissions and he has the, that God access that I said and alluded to earlier. So um, that, that is really the application in, in a nutshell. And I'm going to turn it back over to everyone. If, if there are any questions, I'm happy to, uh, to answer them. Yeah, yeah, there is a couple questions. Um, and I'll start with this one. Uh, going back to the spanning support that you have, uh, what's the typical response time on that? And do you offer online chat? We don't have online chat, but we have 24-hour support. Our support center is located in South Carolina. Do you have any kind of uh, uh, communicated SLA response levels? With, yeah, I mean, you're going to get a response within 24 hours. Obviously, if it's, you know, we do have our, you know, our levels of, of urgency, but I, I can say typically within 24 hours, an issue is going to be resolved in my experience. Okay. Um, Sam, did you, did you touch on the, uh, the dark web uh, piece of this. I know that that's potentially a little bit <clears throat> newer piece of this. I, I, I've only really dealt with it from the um, dark web ID side, but um, uh, is that something that this demo is kind of loaded for? It's, you, you know, the, the dark web monitoring mm -hmm. is really an MSP only feature. Okay. So I, I mean, I can show it if you'd like, but uh, it's okay. But well, we're an MSP. Is <laughs> that something? Okay. That we'll... <clears throat> well, sure, sure. I'm more than happy to show it then. It's it's very simple from from a uh, you know just just a technology perspective. We wrote a script. We're crawling the dark web. We're looking for certain data points, and really what we're looking for is domains. All right. So we want to find out where the credentials were were taken from. So the origin, if the password was compromised, who the user is, the date found, and then we'll also tell you if that employee is active or old, you know, if, if, if that person used, you know, is an old employee or an, ex an existing employee. Mm -hmm. So this is very helpful. And I actually had a customer uh, just a couple of weeks ago go with dark web monitoring. It's because it's an add-on, really. Uh, and, and the reason being the CEO got hacked on his personal email. It was, it's a relatively big company. And the, so the CEO got hacked on his personal email. He hired a forensic IT uh, specialist and they found out that however they got into his personal email was a result of his professional credentials being exposed on the dark web. So this has, you know, this has far reaching implications. It's not just about your professional information getting leaked. These hackers are like, okay, we couldn't get anything professionally. Now let's look them up personally and let's see if we can get into the personal stuff. And yep. so when the, when the CEO was compromised, he was like, look, we're putting 
whatever we can. I, I don't want this to happen again. Um, so yeah, that's just, just one example of, of, of how this works. But we're just giving you in real time, any, anyone that is exposed, anybody who ends up on the dark web, you're gonna be notified. Yeah, <clears throat> this is a tool that we use. It's another Kaseya product that we use. And it's, it's been incredibly helpful, uh, you know, just to, you know, whether, whether the user's active or not, uh, you know, maybe at one point in time, you know, a good example I heard is at one point in time, an employee, maybe an office manager, they're not there anymore. Their password got dumped. Uh, I heard an example where they had a account at staples.com that was attached to their, um, their business checking account. And uh, the credentials that were dumped to the dark web worked just fine on that site. And they, they were like, well, that person hasn't worked here for years, but you know, there's a username and password and anyone, as you just brought up credential stuffing, right? They were just trying every single site that they could with that username and password until they, they had some success. So that, <clears throat> that brings us back to a couple more questions here, uh, specifically around the backup piece of it. Uh, one thing, uh, one question is about the different level of spanning admins available. Uh, for instance, the, the, uh, example is, uh, if they wanted to give managers access to spanning to review terminated mailbox, uh, is there a way to give them access to just certain mailboxes, those mailboxes um, without access to leadership and other confidential mailboxes? Um, at, at this time, no, uh, but that is an API limitation on Microsoft's end. Uh, it's you're, you're getting access to the entire domain. Mm -hmm. So we, we can't limit, you know, there's no levels of, of spanning admins, right? Um, not at this time. However, just like any piece of software, we're constantly updating our UX and we're working with the API that Microsoft provides. So okay. take a note of that. That's a, that's a good, it's a good feature. Yeah. Great. Another question is, uh, around is, is, uh, this product only for office 365 or does it apply to other services uh i can jump into our other uh services if you'd like to see it um we also have spanning for g suite so g suite uh, once again not getting too much into the weeds on the ux the 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 general business model this, this the technology remains the same uh it resides within google so you can access this through the google app panel and you can do essentially everything that I just showed you within 365. So we do have a backup product for, uh, for, for G Suite. We also have a backup product for Salesforce. Okay. Any other questions, folks, before we wrap this up? Feel free to pop them in there. That was good. Uh, thanks uh, for being here, Sam. I appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you for that. <laughs> that was. That was I, great. I, I hope it helped. Yep. Yeah. That was great. That was great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, <clears throat> if uh, if there aren't any more questions, Jordan, I don't know if you have any more that have been queued up there. Um, we can just uh, thank Sam and uh, our next webinar, uh, kind of keeping with the same um, uh, schedule that we've had, uh, will be probably toward the end of the month again, next month, we're targeting the 30th. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, I also wanted to point out, uh, anybody who's participating in this webinar, um, through uh, for the next few weeks here, we're gonna have special pricing on, on spanning. Um, so if you are interested, uh, you know, let us know. Um, we're We've, we've, they've given us a really great, some really great incentives um, to get uh, some people onboarded onto this. So I think we're really going to try to target uh, getting um, a big chunk of our user base on. And this is something that we're, we're happy to sell all a card as well. So um, yeah, please contact us. Just uh, our, our, uh, our email address, or our website, topdogpc.com. And um, you can email support at topdogpc. You can give us a call. At six five one three one five eight two five five. That's our help desk number. That'll just uh, forward to. Um, they'll forward that to the right people. But um, yes, again, thanks, Sam. 
uh, thanks, Jordan. Thanks. Uh, uh, we didn't, uh, we, I don't think we actually pulled Brian into the meeting here from Kaseya, but uh, thanks for attending and watching, Brian. Um, and uh, Jordan, I don't know if you have anything else. Uh, no, no, that's it. Okay. No questions came in. So that's okay. a wrap, guys. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good one.